has been looking into what happened in the past when winter storms knocked power plants offline. Tanya, what did you find? Well, that's right, Chris. We've been looking at this all day. We found that regulators have been warned over and over again that they needed to be better prepared for these sorts of extreme uh, weather conditions. And as we've all experienced, our, it's pretty clear they didn't do enough. We've also taken a look at uh, what happened back in 2011. We found that there were 26 power generators that went offline in 2011 that also went offline in 1989. And so we've been asking ERCOT, trying to find out how many of those 26 also went offline again this year. And so we also, and today we also spoke to Comptroller uh, Glenn Hagar. He authored a, a bill that required uh, power generators to file reports with state regulators to show what they had done to, to weatherize their plants. And it also instructed the regulators to be sure that the state's electrical, electrical grid was ready for this sort of thing. And, this is what he had to say. Do you think it was enough? Well, obviously the event that we went through and many Texans unfortunately are still in without power or with busted pipes, with damage to their homes and their businesses, this is a much more severe event than we ever had back 10 years ago. And so having a state that was in the position we're in, we need to ensure that we are never, ever, ever making our citizens go through what we just have and are continuing to go through in the upcoming few days left. But I don't disagree that did it go far enough? Well, we, the event that we had the last few days tells us the answer to that. He also uh, wants to know how many of these power plants that went off this time are repeat offenders uh, from back in 2011. And he also told us he agrees with the governor's decision to make this an emergency item on the state's agenda. Uh, today I also spoke with a official from uh, Bryan, Texas Utilities, and he told us that they had learned the lessons of what happened and that they did not want to repeat. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. We did go back in, uh, really went through all of our uh, uh, our piping, tubing, uh, did a lot of uh, insulating. And knowing that this event was coming, uh, we went back through and double checked again, made sure that anything that had been worked on was re-insulated. And so far uh, we have four generating units and they, they've all operated uh, throughout this uh, issue that we've had since uh, Sunday night. Uh Today, I also asked Garland Light and Power. Back in 2011, they had some plants that went offline. They told us today that none of their plants uh, went offline during this crisis. And we are asking ERCOT for a complete list of the plants that have gone offline during this crisis and why. And also, we told you yesterday that ERCOT had taken the names and bios of its board members off its site because of threats that they were receiving. And ERCOT's uh, CEO acknowledged today that that was, was a mistake and they will be putting those names back on the website. Back to you. All right, Tanya Eiser reporting live for us. We know you will continue to work hard to get to the bottom of what happened with ERCOT. It